Hey, welcome to Mad English TV. Look at this sentence. Lisa asked for another piece of cake, even though she had already eaten four pieces. Is that right or wrong? It's right. Okay, let's look at another sentence. Although Jim had never taken swimming lessons, he jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool. Is that right or wrong? What do you think? It's right. Okay, they're both right. So this lesson is on the past perfect verb tense. So how do we make the past perfect verb tense? Well, we use the verb had. If it was the present perfect, it would be have. If it was the future perfect, it would be will have. But this is the past, so it's had. And then with our perfect tenses, we have these strange verbs like eaten, taken, woken, okay? Those are called past participles. So we use these in the perfect tense. Now, if it's the perfect continuous tense, then we don't use them, okay? The perfect continuous would be, she had been eating. Then we have the ing ending on eat, because all the continuous tenses have ing. But if it's just a perfect tense, then we have uh, these strange ones here, okay? So when do we use the past perfect verb tense? Well, we use it when we're trying to say that something happened before something else in the past, okay? So we need this one to talk about that one. So anytime we're gonna use the past perfect, it means we have to have this one as a reference point, okay? Here we are now, here's the past. We're trying to say that something happened before this event that is, is relevant to this, okay? For example, in this sentence, Lisa asked for another piece of cake even though she had already eaten four pieces. She asked for another piece of cake, that's our simple past, but we wanna say something interesting that happened before this that gives this some new meaning, okay? And that is, she had already eaten four pieces of cake before she asked for another one, okay? So both these things are linked, they're related to each other, right? So let's look at this example. Although Jim had never taken swimming lessons, he jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool, okay? He jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool. That's our simple past. But we want to say something that happened before this that gives this some information, some sort of new meaning, right? And that is that he had never taken swimming lessons. So actually nothing happened over there because he didn't take swimming lessons. But if he would have taken swimming lessons, it would have happened before this, right? He would have taken swimming lessons, then he jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool. Okay, so both these things are sort of related. That gives this some, some new meaning. Now, in the sentence, you can choose which piece you want to have first. You could have the simple past first and the past perfect second, or you could have the past perfect first and the simple past Second, it's your choice. Let's look at these examples. Lisa asked for another piece of cake even though she had already eaten four pieces. Okay, so here we have the simple past first and the past perfect second. But we could switch it around to say this. Even though she had already eaten four pieces of cake, Lisa asked for another piece. Okay, so here it's flipped around. We have our past perfect and our simple past. Okay, it's the same with this one. Although Jim had never taken swimming lessons, he jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool. So what do we have first here? We have the past perfect, and then we have the simple past second, but we could switch it around. Now, if we switched it around, what do you think the sentence would look like? Try to switch it around in your mind. Okay, well, we'd probably 
put, we'd probably start with the word gym, right? So we would start our sentence here, but we're not going to put gym later on in the sentence. Usually the name comes first, and then if we want to talk about that person later, we use the pronoun, he. Okay, so it would just be weird if we put he first, and then Jim a bit later. Okay, so we would, we would make it like this. Jim jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool, even though he had never taken swimming lessons. Okay, so we have our simple past and our past perfect. Now, let's look at this example. I had just started driving when you called. Okay, now when would I say this? When would I say this? So what does this means that I just started driving and right after I started driving, you called. I look at my phone and my phone's ringing. You're calling. But I can't answer the call because in Canada it's illegal to to call and drive at the same time. So I can't take your call. So I have to drive, right? Then later on, I'll explain to you what happened. I'll say, I had just started driving when you called. That's why I couldn't answer the call. Let's say we have a friend named Sarah. And Sarah told me that she was going to call you at 9 o'clock. Okay, but I tell her that you leave the house at 9 o'clock to go to work. Then after that, I see you later on. And I could ask you, uh, hey, did Sarah call you? And you could say, yeah, she did. And I could say, had she called by the time you left the house? Okay, because I told her that you leave at 9. So I told her to, if she couldn't get a hold of you, it's because you had already left. Had she called by the time you left the house? And you could say, no, she hadn't. I had already left the house. So she called me at work. Okay, so here I'm interested to know what time she called. That's why I asked this question. Okay, did she call you before you left? Because I told her that you leave then. Okay, so I want to know if she actually called you before you left the house. Okay, so if we just have two events in the past that are not really related to each other, then we would just use two simple past uh, tenses like this. I went to Egypt and saw the pyramids. Okay. First you went to Egypt, then you saw the pyramids. Obviously, you went to Egypt first, right? And then you saw the pyramids. So you think they might be linked, but really they're they're not really linked. There's two separate events. You went to Egypt, you saw the pyramids, then you ate lunch, then you went somewhere else, right? It's just a it's a it's a list of events, and so we can just use the simple past for all of those. They're not really dependent on each other. But I could say something like this. Um, before the plane landed in Egypt, uh, no, how would I say it? I could say, um, yeah, I could say, before the plane landed in Egypt, I had already seen the pyramids from the air. Okay, so you're sitting in the plane and you look out your window and you see the pyramids even before you land. And now you're telling me. So now you're saying, Mark, uh, before I landed in Egypt, I had already seen the pyramids from the air. <laughs> okay. I know this is sort of complicated. Uh, that's why a lot of English learners don't even use this verb tense at all, the past perfect. I'd say probably most English learners that I talk to, they, they don't really know how to use this verb tense, and they, they so they just try to avoid it. You know, I don't know. I think the best way to learn this is just by looking at examples and getting some practice. Okay, that's why I gave you those examples here in the lesson. And let's do some practicing right now. So I want you to make a sentence with the past perfect tense. Try, anyway. Let me know in the comments right down there, and I'll tell you if it's right or wrong. And if it's wrong, I'll tell you how to fix it, how to make it a little bit better. Okay, see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.